So with that, um, we do have a couple of uh, questions that are coming through, and I think I'd like to just slide us right straight through to um, questions. And But before I do, I want to just acknowledge that we've got, um, I'm looking right now at my copy of the Promoting Health of Older Adults book. Um, we've got our other editors that are online with us today, of course, or Grootman, but we also have Peggy Edwards, Melanie, of course, you were one of the editors, and Francis Grunberg. Um, but I see we also have Gloria Gutman on, who was a contributor to the book. And uh, I just wanted to say welcome to Gloria. And if there's any other folks, any other contributors that wanted to say hello and introduce themselves, then please do. Um, and also, um, because I know that some folks will need to sign off, um, I did do a random draw for the, uh, the door, the Zoom prize winner, I guess, of the book. And the name I drew was Mario Brondani. So um, congratulations, Mario. I'll get in touch offline to uh, connect with you to make sure that you get your copy, your copy of the book. So with that, um, <clears throat> and questions for any of our speakers, you can do, and of course, Irv, um, if you want to, or any of our contributors to um, answer the question. The first one that we had come through was, um, you know, thinking about how to best deliver on the equity front. How do we get all those ministries of help across the country to systematically and consistently collect the right socio-demographic data that we need um, so that we can really reveal those underlying inequities and disparities in a, in a way that can't be debated? So any comments on that? On the, how do we do that? How do we encourage some of that coordination? Tough question. And probably not just my thought would be not just ministries of health, right? It would be, you know, there's so many ministries that collect data that's relevant to health that falls outside of the purview of, of just health, you know? So transportation data and housing data, like, so how do we, how can we encourage some coordination around that? I was going to just actually, <clears throat> following up on your comment, ask what kind of information are you looking for? I mean, some of it is being collected, but uh, I mean, Stats Canada has, has good information on some things, not good information on other things. So, uh, you know, it's in bits and pieces. We also have a big issue around administrative databases, which are phenomenal for certain things and then have major gaps. So, uh, so it's beyond the health ministry. And of course, uh, provincial jurisdictional issues are, are very difficult to coordinate. So, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I guess I'm, one of the things I'm encouraged about is that it's also more on the radar, sadly, because of COVID, mm -hmm. uh, that we've realized where we have gaps in information. It's too bad it had to come to a pandemic for people to realize that. So I'm kind of hopeful that some information is better collected, but that's probably not capturing the, well, it won't, things around transportation, those most, you know, more specific issues that are just, or, or sometimes they are asked that some, some surveys have questions and then, but they're not really that great. Yes. You know, you always want another mm -hmm. question, so. Yeah. I would, I would like also to, can I add it, Verena? Can I jump in, Verena? Do I, uh, yeah. <clears throat> I, it depends also what we want to do with data. I mean, I was so surprised when we start with the community building approach with, you know, learn about your area, learn about your community, look at the, what the statistic, which are very easy to uh, available. I mean, to the age, and we have that in, in StatCan, we have that also in Institut de la Statistique du Québec. Everyone can type a, a, a name and find out where and how, and what's the, the, the mean of a, the age and so long, you know, it, and small data made a lot of ways, a lot of miles, if you want me to say, because they were just pushed by, by normal people asking, hey, we are half of 50% half of Rimouski is, a, is a, a, a older than 50 years old and so on. And, and, th and that made, made, made sense, that made, the people aware of okay we are aging a lot more than we we thought uh, 
and also the the, the uh, focus group fo focus group sorry focus group are very important as well to because you have wording words quote uh, and it makes sense for the for the stakeholders and those that uh, also run miles if, if if I take my own needs as a um, as a researcher, it's not going to be the same. But for specific action, when you want to make change, it's it's okay. I'm 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 aware of that because we are very lucky to have that in Canada. Because I I try to do that somewhere else in in the world, and we don't have they don't have the same uh, uh, infrastructures for data. And when they when sure is thing it is right, uh, and Milani and Verena are going to. To, 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 get, to say that I'm right, we have, as a researcher, we have never enough data. But it's not the same thing. And I think, you know, I think in that question was that, that the, the most tricky part is that systematic coordination um, mm -hmm. of those processes, right, across the levels. And that's, that is a very challenging thing. I do know, you know, the Public Health Agency of, of Canada, for example, um, does have the health inequalities data um, that's that is online where there is some systematic um, collation, not necessarily collection, but they collate the data that's been collected across a number of sources um, to identify inequities across the population. Um, but that systematic coordination is um, is extremely um, extremely difficult. Okay, we do have uh, a couple of other questions. One is um, around housing authorities. So are there any housing authorities across Canada that are involved in age-friendly issues? So for example, Saskatchewan Housing Authority. Um, do folks know of, of other health authorities that are specifically looking at those age-friendly issues? Health authorities, no. Housing housing authorities, any housing? Housing authorities, okay. Yeah. Okay, but... but uh, the CH, uh, the Canadian Society of uh, SCHL <laughs> is, is involved in some areas in Quebec uh, for, for specific pilot projects. Could you type the that Canadian. in the chat box, Suzanne? Pardon me? Could you type that in the chat box just yeah. so we can see and we can look that up actually? I will, I will find out the, 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 the acronym in English. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Um, I can look it up in French too. That's okay. Um, any others, Verena or Melanie or, or anyone online that you could offer um, in the chat box even of housing authorities that are um, that are looking at age-friendly related issues specifically? Not I mean, partly, I, I don't know if that's quite the question. I mean, issues around universal design speak directly to age-friendly. So if you had consistent application of universal design, so that would be one piece of it, right? Uh, so that's one piece part. Sometimes universal design is not implemented. Plus it doesn't deal with, you know, the broader issue of housing in and of itself. So. Um, I I don't think so. I don't think there's enough being done. Uh, but I have no solutions. I guess I have so few solutions. I'm just um, going to pop one in the chat box here that someone uh, suggested, sent to me. Oh, I see they've already put it into the, uh, the main chat box, actually. Um, seniors Advocate and, and BC Government. And I think sometimes that work, you, you make a good point, Verena, that you know, if we look at those broader um, community planning issues, for example, then they will speak to um, these. The trick is really taking that equity lens, right? To um, to community social isolation, community design types of issues. And I was to say that uh, with the COVID situation, there is a huge housing need in uh, that that increase a lot. Uh, people move a lot around here in Quebec and now there is really housing issue in terms of uh, the cost of uh, the rent. Um, if we have affordable um, place to live, there is less of them. And in Sherbrooke, we have a, a revitalization of the, the center of Sherbrooke. So this will be 
new um, new uh, construction and with will we are afraid that it will increase the price of the renting uh, so uh, really we have to uh, to mobilize but the we the political uh, people are really involved in this uh, to find solution here uh, uh, in Sherbrook uh, and I hope it will uh, it will get better but as Verena mentioned uh, it's really worrying and it's uh, there is no easy solution on that and maybe there is a need for a legislation about uh, every time you build a new building, a piece of it should be uh, affordable. And there is more of creative solution like this and mm -hmm. maybe universal design, uh, more uh, universal design application also, but it's, mm -hmm. it's not covering the social part. That you, we, if, if we want to create social support, we really have to have socialization places in those buildings and with the cut and the reduction of spaces it's it's often, it's often those places that are removed uh, to create more apartment so it's really an issue um. yeah and i i, I like the uh, what is in the chat from peggy peggy edwards uh, through the seniors advocate uh, the BC government is quite involved uh, in age-friendly housing issues. I think, I think we ha we still have to push. We still have to do things like uh, uh, be louder on that, as as uh, as because it it, it won't it won't uh, it, it won't go away. It's even it's even worse. With like Melanie said, if there's any um, uh, determinant on health of health so important house as housing i don't know but it was so obvious uh, during the pandemic it's, it's you can see it that uh, you know people moved away they went to the countryside uh, and the price went up and so long but you know and i think we we do have to 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 be to advocate we do have to push more and more I just wanted to add too, and this has become so apparent during the COVID pandemic, the issue around internet access and the digital divide, which has further marginalized those already at the margin. And when I see what's happening here, right here in Winnipeg, Manitoba, some of the government housing, social housing that does not have proper internet access to me, that is pure political will or lack thereof. So you now have people who are already at the margins, marginalized, and now with a pandemic, they're completely cut off. And we know internet is expensive. So, so maybe there is public access, Wi-Fi in some of the buildings, but then people don't feel safe going to those buildings because they're you know, and speak kind of to that security piece that Suzanne, you mentioned, that is an important thing. Do you feel safe to go into a public room? To me, that is lack of political will that could be changed and that needs advocacy, like was said, that pushing towards having that access. Yeah, I agree, I agree. I agree. Um, so we do have another question. Um, Building on that, based on, you know, all the research and the ideas that were presented to me, what are, you know, what are some realistic, attainable, affordable options for ad older adults within Canada? I'm assuming this is, um, you know, related to housing. Maybe we've, maybe we've already um, covered that a little bit. There was a, there was a suggestion in the chat box about co-op housing, but um can we can we add some light anymore on on some of those realistic, attainable, affordable options for older adults? Cooperative is is a very good option, and we've seen it. Uh, the, if you look at the, um, I will send you my slides with, uh, and you can uh, watch the small films. It's it's the small videos, but it's are very interesting because. They were made by um, a filmmaker who is uh, quite well known. She did it 
because she she thought it was important. <laughs> and you have an interview with people talking about this, the the meaning of home and and in the later life and how it's important to to be to feel safe and to to be active and to be to still be part of the community because and it, everything was possible because it was a cooperative. Uh, but cooperative itself, it's it has to be also with uh, with with uh, to have this cooperative, they have to change two laws. They have to change a law that the 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 board could uh, receive people older than seventy five years old. They have also to change a law that they couldn't be to buy part of the of the um, of the building. They had the part of the, co the cooperative, it's the community itself. It's a city, the little city, the little rural community of rural who paid for it. You see, it's, but it's a cooperative, it's not, and the idea, we have to invent, we have to find new ways of doing things. That was the point of, for us to look at what we're, we can see in Denmark, in, in, uh, in other countries, because we we are stuck in two uh, two, two 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 little uh, uh, opposite uh, um, options, and I think it's worth it because it's worth it when you do it properly. You reach exactly what uh, Melanie is talking about. The you know to to still be active and still to be part of this. Yeah, uh, and you know, someone just just put in the um, chat box. How do we get people to buy into this type of, of housing? You know, everyone is there's such a culture of individualism and um, uh, I guess isolation in some ways, right? Where we each need yeah. own space. So how how do we how do we recreate that kind of culture and shift the way that um, society thinks about ways of living? Yeah, I I have no. Uh, experience doing seeing that, but the small cooperative that I'm talking about is not far away from where I live, and I'm volunteer that since maybe almost from the beginning. And people are just living in the community. You know, they're coming in. There are people who are very individuals, but they won't last lo very long because they will say, because everyone has to do his part, his part or her part. You know, the the oldest one was uh, cleaning up the the ramp. You know. It was the cleanest ramp in, in Canada, probably. But she was doing it every day. and But she had the feeling that she was doing something for this community. Mm -hmm. And I think I think we are more social than we think we are. We've seen it in the COVID as well. We need to see people who are human, <laughs> human or social animals. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I also think some of the buildings we currently have, so these are not new models, so these... 55 plus or assisted living, whatever they're called. Let me give you a, an example. I, I know somebody who just recently moved into one of those buildings. So there are a lot of older adults in there. You would, and there, there's one suite after the other, and you would think there would be social interaction. Well, this person is feeling totally socially isolated and lonely. There's no contact. And I've been wondering about why that is, and I would like to actually see the building. I bet you it's because of the way it's laid out. There's long hallways and there's no place to interact. So you don't encourage that interaction. So I think it's an old model. I think we need to have different models of encouraging interaction and building community because I don't think it comes naturally, not by this example. And this is a social person. So, and maybe it will come over time. So apart from all those new models, like co-ops, I, you know, I like that and home sharing, it, all of those are good ideas, but even just our models of those old ideas of, of buildings, what that means. So I think there's some innovation to be done. And just to add on, I, I'm on a committee by a, an interior design students where they have to model design. I mean, it's, it's a hypothetical, but they have to design housing and she's designing a uh, uh, housing for, for people who are artists and is truly with her design trying to encourage that interaction. And you can do that. 
but it needs a different way of thinking where the common areas so you can have be alone of course you want to be that but also encourage interaction almost again you don't want to force people together but at least you want to have opportunities for interaction i think if we could implement more of those and there are examples out there that would be great yeah and you touch a point that's what we why we work with the belgium uh, um, uh, architect uh, uh, Masson, uh, and he he was working on that, and also the small cooperative I'm we're talking about is made that way. They, and every cooperative normally they don't have this kind of a huge place where people can can come together and so on. They are just made on one model, and we crit criticize that as well when we've seen them saying you're just uh, uh, add to the, uh, the the social isolation of uh, of people, but in the small cooperative they call it. I don't know the name in English, but uh, Pierre must, uh, must yeah, Alain must work for that today. It's called in French bassin versant, uh, where the, the all the water comes through, uh, and you, you have to take care of the, your bassin versant. But you, we, you, they call it bassin versant sociologique. So, they, and it is to make people coming together and work together and and eat together, doing stuff together, and so on. I don't know, Pierre, is, is Pierre there? The okay. Pierre, uh, Alain. Okay. So, so thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. And um, I That's think- Watershed. What Watershed. What Watershed. Watershed. Watershed, exactly. That's what oh. <laughs> <laughs> we, they call it, they call it exactly like that. You say, we have a social watershed. <laughs> and right now you were very right on that. Great. Okay, thanks very much. Um, I think there is a question in the, in the chat box that we're, we're missing, but unfortunately we're going to have to um, wrap it up here. Um, Irv, I want to uh, give you a minute to say a couple of words and um, start closing us out. Can we turn it over yeah. to you? Uh, sure, I, I've been waiting for this. Um, I, I have an idea or I, there's a model that uh, is really uh, effective here in uh, British Columbia, and that's uh, Costco, not the store, but the uh, organization. And it's not just an organization, it's an organization of organizations. They have uh, managed to put under the same umbrella um, uh, organizations that are concerned about older adults. And uh, they've also, I think, tried a bit to do that across the country. Um, but uh, I'm not sure how it, how that's uh, working. So what my suggestion is uh, that uh, um, every province uh, organize an organization of organizations uh, for older adults that can put pr uh, pressure on uh, governments at all levels. So um, I'll, I'll leave you with that uh, thought and maybe we can talk it ab about it uh, on the uh, the next webinar, which is coming up in a month, on uh, strengthening community action. So, um, in closing, I'd like to uh, thank uh, Diane for asking, uh, acting as a great master of uh, ceremonies uh, for this webinar and and for the series, for that matter, um, and also for helping uh, Melanie uh, organize this. Uh, uh, webinar. Uh, I'd also like to thank uh, um, uh, Vero uh, Verona, Suzanne, and Mel Melanie uh, for their excellent and stimulating uh, presentations. In addition, I, I want to uh, thank uh, the National Collaborating Centre for hosting this webinar, as well as uh, uh, the series based on promoting the uh, health of older adults. Finally, I'd like to uh, thank all of you for uh, attending this uh, um, today and uh, hope that you go away with some new ideas on how to create equitable and age-friendly uh, communities. So that's all I have to say and uh, have a great day, everybody. Thank you, Irv. thank you. Um, and thanks to everyone, and again, for your patience with all of our tech difficulties at the beginning. Um, we will do some follow-up to iron this out for the next time, and we will share 
resources and the French um, interpretation, as we said, at a later time. Um, please uh, do fill out the evaluation survey, <clears throat> um, which I think will pop up in your screen, but um, we'll also send that link again in a follow-up email. And um, I just also want to say how much I really appreciate working with Irv and the other editors and um, all of Health Promotion Canada on this series. This is, um, we're having some wonderful conversations and we're really getting deep at some equity issues. So um, stay tuned to everyone to uh, the next ones. So with that, um, I will close out. Um, I know with our speakers, sometimes we stay on for a few minutes today. Unfortunately, I can't. So um, let's, uh, we'll connect with everyone afterwards and otherwise everyone have a great day. Thank you. Bye.